well so what is a string I have given a statement as a string is usually a bit of text sequence of characters in python we use double quotes or single quotes to represent a string so what is a string see when i say a string it is nothing but a data structure okay it's a data type okay so when we have group of characters in other programming language what you has to happen is when i say something like a this a is to be considered as a character okay we call this a as a character there is to represent this a in a single quotes representing it as a character okay so when you have group of characters let me say that i have something like apple i have a p p l e so here i have group of characters which is a p p l and e so this group of characters combined together we call it as string and we represent in double quotes this a is just a character which is a cat and group of characters combined together we call it as string one of the most important data type okay usually lot of scenarios we try to work on the string and we end up with the applications where we want to count the number of words in a file or the number of specific words present in the file the length of the string or I mean the length of the sentence or it may be how many number of phone numbers are present how many number of exclamation marks are present how many number of special characters are present it might be anything for that matter okay to work on the documents we require string okay and the string functions okay the most important functions which is string functions we need to work on string functions we'll understand what are the different string functions and how to use in python programming okay if we start what we are did now is we are consider as a string which is str is equal to vtrix now what i'm doing is the vtrix is the data the vtrix is the data i'm assigning this vtrix to one of the variable by name str okay uh, you must understand that whenever we are assigning in any programming language the assignment will happen from right to left okay that is i'm taking this vtrix i'm assigning to a string str this we all this we have seen in our basics of data structures okay that is assigning a variable assigning a data to a variable by name str okay now how to access this string how to access this string in terms of when i just say print str when i just say print str what happens str will be printed onto the monitor good when as a print str of 0 what happens that is very important see i have a string by name vtrix i want you to understand how the compiler reads it and how the compiler will store i have v p r i c k and s yes. assume i have these characters okay now whenever the compiler understands is stored inside the variable by name str here the assignment happens where indexing will start from 0 where v takes a zero position t takes first position r second position i third position c fourth position k fifth position and s yes, sixth position totally there are seven characters here and each and every character would be taken a position will be taken in a position where indexing will start from 0 so now when i just say print str the complete string will be printed onto the monitor provided provided if i want to print only the zeroth character if i just want to print only the zeroth character that is i want to print only v then what happens i need to do str of square bracket 0 why we want to do square bracket of 0 understand whenever we go with indexing it has to be square brackets whenever we go with in the string we have to go for square brackets that is i have a string str in str which position you are looking for you are looking for zero position that is zero index so i say str of 0 if you say no i require something like i require some r then you want to do something like str of 2 you want to have a last character then you can do str of 6 there is one more option to get the last character we can also do str of minus 1 when i give str of 6 you'll get you'll be getting s yes. when i give str of minus 1 then you'll be getting s yes. there are two ways of approaching either i can approach from the extreme end or as you can also approach from the starting also okay similarly when you want, when you need something like k you have two options either you can do str of 5 or else you can do str of minus 2 this is how we start accessing the string okay we'll we'll be coming to how exactly if i want to access only v3 okay i want to get only v t r i then what to do i want to get only t r i then what to do okay we'll be coming to the topic as of you understand whenever i say string string is nothing but the group of characters combined together under one variable name here i have str i say str is equal to some variable name and the assignment will be starting from zero because indexing will be starting from zero in python 
okay so this is about the basics of string okay we will see the accessing later okay just a moment we'll go for the next topic yes okay i'll just execute this now i just say str of matrix okay the string matrix is stored then how to access the string i say print str then i print str of 0 str of 2 str of minus 1 str of minus 2 let me run this we'll see what is the output you can see this when i say print str the complete string matrix is getting printed onto the screen i say str of 0 only v is getting printed str of 2 only r is getting printed similarly for s and k and this is how we access the string in python okay now let us go for the substring let us go for the substring let us understand in detail okay let me start a sketch and give us complete details about substring okay so now here we have something like okay here we have a string okay here we have a string by name matrix for machine learning i just taken a statement like matrix for machine learning okay now i have a string here so str the same str i have taken matrix for machine learning here what happens the indexing happens right from zero again where v takes zero position t takes first position r takes second position i takes third position c again fourth position k again so every time the indexing will start from zero it reaches till the end and make clear in python the string can be represented either in the single quotes or it can also be represented using double quotes there is an option for you it's okay not a problem okay now what we do is what we do is i want to assign i want i have initialized the string by name matrix for machine learning okay if i want to stay print the complete string what we do just print str that's it i'll just do print str so the complete string would be printed onto the monitor no worries with that provided if i want to actually take i don't want to print the complete string i want to take the part of string let me take okay i have a sentence by name matrix for machine learning okay i'm taking something from 11 is 2 what it means to say it means to say 11 start from 11th position and i given is 2 mean to say give everything which is there after the 11th position that is what it means to say when I say str of square bracket 11, it once again understand whenever I say square bracket, it is nothing but indexing. Okay, so I say 11 is 2. So I start from 11th position and it reaches till the end. Understand? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So whatever comes after this 11th position, I need till the end. We will see the output. Don't worry about it. Okay, now I have one more option telling it as third from third to sixth character okay i require second to sixth character yes that also have an option okay that is one is to six that is some second character to six character okay why have you given two here you are saying str of one is to six because we know right indexing will start from zero but for the user it is second letter but for us it is first letter because by indexing will start from zero correct so i given for user str of two to six is nothing but str of one is to six okay then i say i require all the characters from the beginning till the ninth position okay i'll write a statement here i'll write a statement here i say something like v tricks okay for okay machine learning let him let me take the statement okay v tricks for machine learning i've written the statement okay i've also included the space now here's the zero position first position second third four five six okay then seven eight nine ten eleven twelve 13 14 15 something like this okay so i say something like i require everything i require everything from starting till the eighth position till the uh, eighth position that is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 okay so i'll be getting starting from 0 it will reach till 8 and it gives all the characters so i'll be getting vtrix as an output okay so similarly i need to understand that i require the last four characters okay i require the last four characters let me see the output so that you'll get a better understanding on how it runs okay now i'll just see the output let me take the cursor and put it on the screen so we will have a right understanding okay i'll be running this just a moment okay fine i'll run this output can you do this it says it says okay machine learning you told you print the complete string str so matrix for machine learning is printed onto the monitor you s just said that i require from 11th character to everything okay so what do you mean by 11th character to everything i'll just try to 
put all the character indexing now okay so you can just see that from the 11th character it starts from m you can see here okay from the 11th character it starts from m and it i'll require all all everything after 11th character oh you require everything after the 11th character see then i say machine learning okay whatever is there after the 11th character till the end everything is been printed onto the monitor then we said okay from 1 to 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 Got it. So trick is there. Why not S? Because it start from one, go till six. It will not print six. Understand? When I told one is to six, you must get T R I C K. Yes, correct. But you are getting only T R I C K. Why so? Why so? Because we will start from the position and will not take the end number that is i am not considering 6 i'll go till 6 and i'll take the character before 6 that is i'll take till 6 and i'll take till 5 that is i'll go till 6 but i'll not consider 6 i'll take only 5 so i'll be getting 1 2 3 4 5 that is i'll be getting t r i c k so this is what output what i'm getting here and when i say starting from the zero position because i have not mentioned anything here and it was starting from zero position till the eighth position okay 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 oh till the eighth position don't take eight don't take this f come till eight and type and print something before eight that is v t r i c k will be printed onto the screen okay similarly i say 9 is to minus 4 Okay, nine is to minus four. So what I'm doing here, when I say nine is to minus four, okay, I'll be taking, I'll be taking. Okay, if I'll just make this as minus one, so we'll get a better understanding for that. Uh, just bear me with one minute. Okay. Yes. Okay. What I'll do here is I'll just do nine is to minus one, and I'll run. See, you're getting something like machine learning on the screen. Why is it so? Let me take the example here. Okay. See, I have something like nine is to minus one. What is doing? It tells that okay, go till the last, go till this exclamatory, go till the last, and take nine characters. Okay, and take that nine characters before that. Mean to say that I have okay, I have something like uh, slicing. Okay, print str of nine is to minus one. Okay, so what I do here? I start working on the machine. I say that okay, leave the first nine positions, whatever you have. Do the first five positions, then start from O. Okay, nine is to minus one. That is, take leave the first nine characters. So one zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. Leave that nine, then go from O and print everything. That is what it means to say nine is to minus one. Okay, leave the first nine characters, then give everything whatever is there. This is about the statement. Hope you got an understanding. Okay, so I'll just revise. I'll just revise the topic now. So what I do is I'll just clear and I'll revise and out uh, uh, clarity now. So whenever we have a statement by name string, whenever we have a string, okay, we will have something like apple. Okay, now if I need everything, I'll just say print str. I just say print str. No, if you say I don't require everything, I require only part of it. Then you select the position, the zero position, one, two, three, and four. Okay, you can take only the first two positions. Then you can give something like str. Okay, indexing start from zero, go till two. So what will be the output in this case? It is yes, it is ap. Okay, now I say something like I require everything from the second position. Two is two. Okay, now what happens? Go till the second position. So ple will be your output. Okay. Similarly, I say come from the back. Okay. I mean to say that I don't I don't want to print everything. So I say something like str of minus one. So when I say str of minus one, which would be printed? It would be four. That is e. Okay. So when I say str of minus two, when I say str of minus two, what would be printed? In this case, come from come to the extreme right and take the last but one position, which is l. And here it is e. Okay. And I have one more option. When I say str of, I say str of two. Is two minus one. That is okay. I must understand. I must go to second position and I must take after that. Okay, it comes here zero, one, two. Then after that, what we have L and E that would be printed onto the monitor. Okay, so this is what the revision what we can listen. Okay, previously what we learned till now was how to take the substring of the string, how to go with index string, how to access the string. Okay, so this is about the one of the major topic. So, given the question, you must understand how to take a part of the string using indexing. This is just by using indexing, where we have not used any functions till now.
Now let us work on concatenation of two strings. Here I have string 1 which is 1. I have string 2 which is TW2. So I have string 1 and string 2 and I have string 3 which is THIE. Now I will try to combine string 1, string 2 and string 3. Okay. So what will be the output? So when I say string concatenation it means to say that okay, we are trying to club three different strings. Okay. Now I have string 1 plus string 2 plus string 3. Okay. If I try to run this and understand what exactly will be the output, the output has to be 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay. So let us try to understand how it is the output. Okay, let me run this. You can see it is 1, 2 and 3. I am adding the same string, I am adding the same string okay, with 1 and one more number n is equal to 2. When I try to add 1 plus 2, what would be the output? Here 1 is the string and 2 is a integer. I am combining the string with the integer. If I run this, what happens? You can see you are getting an error. That is, you can club number with the number or else you can club string with the number string with the string but not string with the number or number with the string because there happens something called as type casting okay we understood something about type casting type casting mean to say that converting from one data type to other data type okay usually what happens usually what happens is when i say something like string okay when i have string like apple and i'm trying to club this apple with phi so output would be in other programming languages the concatenation happens and the output be something like apple phi Okay, that is the lower data type will be converted to the higher data type. There is a concept of typecasting. We call it as typecasting, which is an important topic. Okay, when I say typecasting, typecasting means to say that converting from one data type to other data type. For example, here I have an integer. Converting this integer data type to the higher data type, which is string. Okay, this is called as this is called as implicit typecasting. Just whatever the integer is there, I am converting to string. This is implicit typecasting. When I have the string and converting to integer, converting to integer, this becomes one more typecasting, which is explicit typecasting. Okay, this is implicit typecasting, converting int to string. That is, lower data type is being converted to higher data type. Okay, and higher data type will be converted to lower data type. So here what happens is there is no typecasting which is happening with respect to the string and the integer. I am trying to add, I am trying to add this yes which is equal to 1 and trying to n which is equal to 2 and when I try to add it can concatenate only string to string but not string to integer. This is an error. So you must understand this kind of operation is not allowed in Python. Let's see one more case of, let's see one more case of how to do lab replication. Okay, how to work on the replication. Okay, let me take an example here. Let me take an example here and say uh, str is equal to vtrix. Then I say str into 3. What will be the output? You can see this happens, which is vtrix into vtrix into vtrix. That is, I am not actually multiplying it. I am replicating it. This multiplication operator with respect to string acts as replication. Okay, this you need to understand. And you might get a question that when we try to add str plus 2, it was not happening there. It was an addition operator. We need to we actually try to concat. But when you do multiplication here, it is nothing but we are doing replicating. Okay, the replication operator which is present in Python. Okay, let me take one more string, one more example of that, where I have str, welcome to Python from vtrix, string 1 is str, str2 is welcome, str3 is vtrix, str4 is deep learning. Okay, I have four strings, string str, which is equal to welcome to Python, str2, welcome, str3, vtrix, str4, deep learning. Now what I am trying to do is, I am trying to check whether the particular string is present in one more part of string. That is, I have str2, print, str2 in str, what is str2, welcome, what is str, welcome to Python from vtrix, is str2 present in str, yes right, because str2 is having what, str2 is having what? Welcome, welcome. Str, str is having welcome to Python vtrix. So, str actually str2 is already present in str, correct? So, here we can understand it. We can understand easily that part of a string is already present here. So, what to do? What to do is here it checks. It checks whether this str2 is present in str. This in is one of the operator. This in is an operator which checks 
whether the string is present here str2 in str str3 in str str4 not in str str4 in str now you can understand str3 in str or str vtrix is vtrix present in welcome to python from vtrix yes it is present this is true str4 what is str4 deep learning deep learning not in str yes again it is true because it is not present str4 in str is deep learning present in string it is not so in this case it is false okay so what you are trying to understand is the in operation okay in operation what is the substring you are trying to verify this is substring okay str2 and actual string is str in between there is the in operator what you need to understand okay i am trying to check the substring with the actual string this is one of the comparison operator which is called as an in operator in strings okay so now we will see one of the most important thing which is ascii ascii values uh, most of the people would have been heard about the ascii values where we'll be seeing in lot of the programming cases what is ascii and how to work on the ascii characters today we'll be seeing how ascii would work while working on the strings the full form of ascii usually we spell it as a c a s c i i american standard code for information interchange okay so this is actually full form of ascii okay what ascii values will do is okay if you want to know about ascii you can just go to wikipedia and check the full form of ascii and we'll get to know the details about ascii and how exactly it would work but i'll just brief out how we how ascii works in our programming okay so whenever we say each and every character each and every character what we use it might be a b c d exclamatory mark or question mark anything it might be whatever the operators whatever the letter which is present on your typewriter will be given some code some standard code it will be assigned some number this number remains the same throughout the world okay because there is whenever we start working on the programming the compiler need to understand that every alphabet is assigned with a number because each and every alphabet is assigned with a number it will be converted to binary and the processing will happen in the back end similarly you take any character which is there on your keyboard including your white space including your white space there is some ascii value which is fixed for it, it is the standard code it remains same throughout the world for example whenever i say something like capital a capital a is having an ascii value of 65 when i say capital b it is having the ascii value of 66 similarly when i say small a the small a is having the ascii value of 97 when I say small b, you have an ASCII value of 98. Like this, each and every character of your keyboard, or of your in your keyboard, will be assigned some value. Okay, so this remains the same throughout the world. That is maintained by ASCII. Okay. Now, when I want to compare two strings, let me assume that I have a string by name apple. Okay, and I have a string called as mango. Now, if you want to compare whether apple is greater than mango, does not make sense, right? Because how can I, if it was a number, something like 3 greater than 5, then the processing was very easy. Yes, 3 is not greater than 5 because 5 is greater. But in the case of apple is greater than mango, we don't have any measurements here. But how can I measure? So, if, when, I, when I try to compare these two, when I try to compare apple is greater than mango, you will be getting a result as true or false. How is it so? How is it so is in the back end each and every character of this A, P, P, L and E will be converted to ASCII value. It would be added and placed in one result. Similarly, every character of mango M, A, N, G, O will be converted to numbers. It will be stored in a variable. Then it will check whether the total count of the ASCII value of apple is greater than the total count of the ASCII value of mango. For example, when it's something like whether A, B, C is greater than D, E, F. You must understand no because df is greater why so as i told you e capital a when i say small a the small a the ascii value is 97 okay this is 97 plus small b the value is 98 and the small c the value is 99 similarly when i say, when I say cap small d it is 100 plus 101 plus 102 so when i add this 100 plus 101 plus 102 and if i add 97 98 and 99 you must understand this number is actually less than compared to this 11 so abc greater than def is false okay because df is greater than abc so like this each and every value each and every character would be converted to ascii then you'll be getting it accordingly this is about the ascii operator 
in our case i am just written the string by name str is equal to abc str2 is equal to abc str3 is equal to xyz str4 is equal to xy and the small z now let us try to compare whether which is true and which is false okay i'll just run this you can get that okay uh, is str2 greater than str it says true str3 is greater than str4 it says false why is it so str is abc and uh, str2 is small abc str2 is greater than str so if i try to compare this if i try to compare you must understand it is small a the capital abc will be having a value i just show an example for you so that we let's do computation and understand how is the number which is defined okay if i take this i have a b and c so for capital a it is 65 and for the capital b it is 66 yes for capital c it is 67 okay similarly for small a it is 97 and for capital b it is 66 and for capital c it is 67 so when i add 65 plus 66 plus 67 and when i add 97 plus 96 66 plus 67 this is actually greater so this is what i'm trying to check here is string 2 is greater than string str2 is greater than str yes it says true this is the output Similarly, when I compare str3 and str4, you can understand easily, actually str4 is greater than str3 because it also involves small z. This is what we need to compare. Okay. So, whenever you are comparing the strings with the relational operator, that is with greater than or less than operator, then you will, that each and every character would be converted to ASCII and the result would be stored accordingly. This is about working on the string with respect to ASCII characters. So now we are into the understanding of the default string functions present inside Python. So when I say default string functions, whenever I give a string for you, so what happens, I'll tell you the task where to say that to count the number of vowels present in the string or also say that count the number of letters present in the string. We also say that convert the string to the capital letter, convert the string to the small letter. To do that, what developers usually do, they write a lot of logic behind it. But there are few functions which is already defined by the Python developers. The Python has already been provided few functions which makes our task very simpler. Okay, these are called as custom string functions present inside Python. Okay, so these are the custom functions. These are custom string functions where we do a lot of activities for this and we'll try to understand how the functions will work and how to remember that. I'll be giving you a statement which is just to remember okay so just to remember what are the different string functions present inside python i'll be giving you a statement which makes you people to remember while working on the string functions okay the statement looks something like this it is c4 to fly 8 jupiter's 5 okay you can just see the statement it is c4 to fly 8 jupiter's 5 the statement what i want you people to keep in your mind so that whenever you remember the statement you'll understand different string functions which is present inside python and when once when you start using it you'll remember the functionalities also okay and we are not a memory box again to remember each and every functions and what it will do but for a better understanding so that as and then whenever we require something let us not go back and see what are the functions present so i am giving you the statement to remember which is c4 to fly 8 jupiter's 5 okay where well, i'll be coming and telling you what is this c4 what is this to fly 8 and what is jupiter is 5 at the end of the session okay so let us start understanding let us start understanding how exactly the string is used and how to work on the string functions I have defined a string by name s1 is equal to apple okay i told s1 is equal to apple now what i'll do is i'll just do s1 dot okay i just say s1 dot and i say tab i say tab so when I say s1 dot tab, it will be telling you what are the different functions present for the string s1. So we have so many functions, which is capitalize, case fold, center, count, encode, end switch, format, format map, is ASCII, is digitum, is digitum, is, uh, is identifier, is lawyer, is numeric. There's a lot of functions which are present just for the string. So the complexity of coding for few actions has been avoided because it's already been present okay but let us not and learn go and learn for each and every functions we'll be learning the most important functions what we'll be using in the real life okay so those functions i'll be defining in this file so that we can spend our time to understand how to use those function and 
our next task of our assignments or next task of our, of our like how to use these functions will be done in our next further sessions okay so now i define a string by name s1 is equal to apple so as i told you i'll just do s1 dot and i say tab so you can understand the different string functions present internally okay i'll be taking each and every functions okay and as i told you we'll be not seeing all the functions we'll be seeing the most important functions used in the real world okay the function number one i'll just run this s1 is equal to apple now s1 is containing apple the first function is capitalize the capitalize method converts first character of a string to uppercase letter and lower cases all other characters if any me to say that the capitalized function what it will do is it will be converting it will be converting the given string to the capital letter and the output would be given something like this that is the first character of the string would be converted to capital letter this is about the capitalized function okay i have s1 is equal to a p p l e which is small a p p l e when i say capitalize the first letter which is a would be converted to capital letter this is about the function number one which is capitalized let us go second function which is center i have a string by name python is good okay now what i do is i say string dot center 24 comma then i put star okay so we see python is good string dot center 24 comma star okay we saw capitalized function now we are seeing the center function what center function will do the center method returns a string which is padded with the specific character okay when i say padded with a specific character so when i say python is good it is a string but what we are doing now is we are centering we are centering that okay so that our at the right and to the left if it's there any spaces i'll be embedding that with star I'll just show you the output so that you can understand. See, here we have Python is good. So the length of this particular string is actually 24. Okay, totally it has 24. Mean to say that at the, at the center we need Python is good. And at the left, if you have some space, or to the right, if you have some space, embed that with star. This is what the center function actually does. Okay, so we already now know what is functions. Function is the group of statements combined together which will do some particular task. These are the custom functions. These are the default functions which is already been defined by Python itself. So I'm just using those functions. I say string dot center. It will, I will assign the particular string to the center which embed the star at the beginning and the star at the end. If it's there some space. Okay, this is what we need to understand. I'll take example two. Example two, where I'll just do Python is good, the same string. Then I say string dot center of 24, and I'm not giving comma star or anything. I'm just saying string uh, Python is good, and I'm not giving any anything like star or hash mark or anything like that. So what it will do is it will take the length of the string. So when you take the length of the string is actually 24, provided it is not filling any, it is not filling the space with any of the character. It just says okay, I'm blank, nothing else. This is about the center function. The center function will assign the particular string at the center, leaving something to the left, leaving the space to the left, space towards the right, if not mentioned with any characters. If I mention with some specific character, it will be filling those character at those blank spaces. This is about the center function. See, I'm telling you the use case of all this function will be seeing it, okay? So it's not that uh, we use all these functions whenever we're working on the string, okay? The functionalities, we just need to remember. So when the application comes, you must understand, oh yes, there was a center function. There was a capitalized function. So you need to remember that, then we need to implement the same accordingly. This is about the center function. Let us go for the next function, which is case fold. Now the case fold function. The case fold is a method. See, uh, we usually talk as method or function. Don't get confused with the functions and method. Method is also function. Our function is also called as methods. Okay, there's no difference. Usually, in a in a real term, we call few times as methods, few times it as a function. So let us not worry about it. So the case fold method is an aggressive lower method which converts string to case fold. Okay, what it means? Okay, let us understand. See, when I given something like S1 is equal to Python is good, S2 is equal to Python is good. Okay, what I'm doing here is, I'm not worried about the case. See, in the string 1, the Python P, what I have here, is actually a capital case. In the string 2, S2, the Python, what I have here is P, is small case. Usually, when I convert, when I want to compare this S1 equal to equal to S2, it says, no boss, S1 is not equal to S2, because here P is capital, here P is small. Provided, if you use case fold, and if you compare S1 and S2, it says both are same. 
because I'm using a case fold. The case fold works in such a way that it will not worry about the case. It just worries about the characters present inside it. Here, the Python is good, where the capital P is same as the Python is good, which is small p, because you're using the case fold. It says, yes, the things are equal. If you do not use case fold, if you have compare S1 double equal to S2, then you would have got, no, it is not equal. Okay, so I am not worried about the case. Okay, case insensitive. I am not worried about the case. Then you have to use case fold for comparison. So we saw three different functions now. Center, capitalize and case fold. Let us go for the next function. I will just run this output. Okay, strings are equal. Okay, so if you say, no, we nine, let us assume that I don't want to actually compare. I am not using case fold. And if I try to compare, what will be the output? Okay, I will just comment it out for your understanding. I will just comment this. Okay, so we have a shortcut to comment also, but I don't want to use it as of now. I just use this, then I'll copy and copy this, I'll paste this. I don't want to use case fold now. I just try to compare. I will just try to compare. S1 double equal to S2. Let us see how this would work. Okay. Not getting any output. Because I just given if the condition is true, then print. No, it is not true because S1 is not equal to S2 anymore because it is capital P to small p. But if you use case fold, yes, you say it is equal. That is, it is avoiding the case. Beautiful, right? This is about the case fold function. Good. Let us go for the next function, which is count. Let us go for the next function, which is count. So what is this count function? Okay. The count function or the count method, okay, will actually count the number of occurrences of a substring given in the string. What is it? When I say something like Python is good and it is also best. Okay. And again the stuff string as is. Now I want to count how many number of times is is that is is present inside the string. So what we do? String dot count of substring. So when we run this, what will be the output? It says two times this is is present inside the string. Python is good and it is also best. Okay, so is has appeared twice inside this string. This is what the output. Okay, so the count function was the syntax. Syntax is the string. What you're actually taking? Count string dot count. Then I say substring. Okay, so let us not buy out also. Okay, we will let us not because we already know we have the help function. We have the help function to let us know the syntax about how to use a different function. So let us not worry about how to work on the syntax. Okay, it comes, it comes down the line. But I want you people to understand the logic. Okay, what are different functions? What are different, different string functions doing in the backend? So this is about the count function. The count function will count the occurrences of the specific substring inside the main string. This is about the count function. Okay, so let us take one more example of the count function again, where I am counting the occurrence between the starting and the ending of the string. For example, here I have taken string dot count and I say inside the substring, okay, string is an actual string and the substring is is okay, and I want to count from second position to 15th position. Okay, I'm just taking from the second position, this is from zeroth position. I'm taking from the second position, that is start from this T to the 15th position. Between the second position to 15th position, tell me how many number of times this is is present. Okay, when I run this, you'll be getting output as 1 because I given 15. If you increase this, if you increase somewhere like around 20, let us see if you get 2. No, it is 1 again. Let us give something like 28. It is two. Okay, so depending upon the string, depending upon the length, it will check with given with this length of the character and how many number of times you have the particular substring. This is about the count function, the beautiful function where we'll be using quite a long of time to understand how many number of time. For example, I want to I want to understand okay uh, how many number of times the particular phone number has been repeated. Okay, and I want number of times the name is repeated. Okay, it's very easy now. Okay, no need to write any for loop or if condition, something like that. Just use the count function, take your entire string, take your entire sentence and put it in a string, use the count function and put a substring, then run it. Okay, you'll be getting the count or the occurrences of the particular substring inside your entire document. 
okay the most important functions and every function is important i can't say this function is not important the function is important it comes with the use cases but quite a longer time if i come if it comes to my experience quite a long time i'll be using this uh, count function okay to check whenever i'm working for the nlp kind of problems okay i'll be using the count function most of, most of the time okay most most usually most likely i'll be using this count function okay so this is about the count function let us go with the next function which is ends with okay what this ends with will do the ends with method returns true if a string ends with a specific suffix if not it returns false okay this is a beautiful function again okay it says that if the particular string ends with the given character given substring what i have given now if it is ending with that then say true else you say false how is it i'll just run have a text which is python is easy to learn okay text dot ends with to learn is this text ending with to learn yes okay it says false why is it so there is text dot ends with to learn is text dot ending with to learn why is it so okay let me take that python is easy to learn yes python is easy to learn okay text dot ends with to learn okay i am checking to learn it is having with a full stop okay it is not just learning with it is not just to learn it is learning with to learn dot full stop if i put to learn dot full stop it gives true yes the text is ending with to learn dot okay now if i run understand yes it is true okay so if i don't give to learn if i just give to if you do full stop if i guess is to learn it says it is false see this is case number 1 this is case number 2 with full stop and this is python is easy to learn yes python is easy to learn and it is entire string ends with this yes it ends with this so ends with function will be used to check for whether the substring is present in the actual string and whether it is ending with the given substring this is the put the ends with function okay so usually we say that okay uh, given the particular string uh, india delhi is the capital of india whether the statement is ending with india then we take that okay we also say that it is or it is it is fantastic whether it the particular string is ending with exclamatory mark then we say it is something with expression okay to check those kind of scenarios we'll be using this ends with function okay let us go for the next function which is find so what the statement see for every for every each and every function are given with the statement so that if you just revise this file it is more than sufficient for you people to understand okay i say the find method returns the index of the first occurrence of the substring if found if not found it returns minus 1 what it means it says apple a day keeps the doctor away consume on apple a day okay good then i say string dot find apple fantastic so if i say string apple a day keeps the doctor away okay consume on apple a day okay string dot find apple so you can understand that apple a p p l e is present in this string correct i'll run this okay it says at zero position only this apple is present correct no is starting from zero this p is 1 this p is 2 this l is 3 this e is 4 then again the space is 5 good so i say that string dot find of apple yes it is starting at zeroth position very good okay now i say i am not worried about the first apple i am not worried about the first apple i am worried about the apple which is appearing after the character number 10 oh i am giving telling here as string dot r find okay i say r find okay just say string dot find let us now go for r find okay is so a string dot find apple comma 10 let us see that it says yes at 46th position you again you are found out with the apple okay because you initially you didn't give me any chance you just told string dot find of apple i told because at the beginning only i found apple but now you are telling me that after the 10th position c to it is there any apple appearing so i say yes that is at the 46th position at the 46th position here i can find one more time apple so this is about the find function see each and every function is given with an arguments okay so the arguments is not compulsory is not compulsory there are few functions which says these are the compulsory arguments which has to be given for example i just say string dot find and i don't give this apple it is an error it says this argument which which string you need to find has to be given apple has to be given or something like doctor has to be given that one string is compulsory but the second string is optional 
Okay, I had given Apple and after that I had given 10. This is optional. This is up to the user, how he needs. Okay, so ultimately we need to understand. It, it, it comes by the use cases. As and then when you start using this function, you understand. But this is one of the important function which is find again. Okay, the find function will find where the particular string is present. And if not, if not from the beginning, if you want to start from the particular position, you can also give the index so that it will start searching from there. This is about the find function. And the next function is on format. Format function is such a beautiful function where I'll be using this. I mean, I personally have used this function quite a long time while working on Python programming and deep learning and machine learning models. Okay, the format function, if you understand it very well, you'll be finding a lot of use cases while working on programming. I'll be defining the different types. How can we use the format function so that you'll get a better understanding on this. The format function is basically uh, given with the flower brackets. For example, let me take here as hello with the flower bracket and exclamatory remark. You are already a flower bracket years old. And I had given a dot here, then say format. Since it is a function, I have opening bracket and the closing bracket. The first argument, the first parameter after the format is vtrix and after that I am passing 6. So the compiler what it understands this. Since I have two flower brackets here, the first flower bracket has to be replaced with the first argument which is vtrix. The second flower bracket has to be replaced with the second argument which is 6. Beautiful, right? What are the use cases of it? Use cases of this assume that you need to print something onto the monitor based on the user's input. But you can't go and change the code as and when the user gives some data. We need to format it depending upon the input. So the format function would be passed whatever we use a format function the argument of the input from the user will be passed here okay i'll be telling the use case don't worry in the later session we'll understand about uh, all different use cases while building some models okay while working on different python applications you'll be understanding why format is used okay now as of now just understand how it works okay so i said like hello with a flower bracket you are already flower bracket years old so the first flower bracket is reserved for this vitrix and the second flower bracket is there for this six beautiful the one more way of doing it is this is by default the one more way is using the positional arguments Say, I say that, hello, with a zero here, you're already one here. Then I say dot format, which is comma six. I mean to say that the zeroth argument plays it here. The first argument plays it here. Zeroth argument is vitrix. The first argument is six. It has to be underscored here. So when I say, hello, vitrix, you're already six years old. I mean to say that the format function is replacing the flare bracket with the argument which is present inside format. So vtrix which is zeroth argument, 6 which is the first argument, zeroth argument is placed here and the first argument is placed here. Good. This is about the default argument where I am not giving any position. The type 2 which is positional argument, the type 3 is keyword arguments. See, I had given a keyword for the argument here. I had given the keyword as name equal to vtrix. Rather than just defining a flower bracket, I will be defining the name of the argument. I say name is the argument here. See name is equal to vtrix. Assume if you are doing something like name 1, then you have to mention here as name 1. So whatever the argument you define there, the same, what are the argument name that can be defined here. Okay, this is again the keyword argument. Why are we using this? As I told you, we are using to make our programming dynamic. Okay, dynamic in terms of, I will be telling one of the use case, one of the use case where you will understand a better uh, clarity on it. Okay. Let us take an example for it. Okay. I'll take an example of, okay. So now I am working from some machine learning application. Let us assume. Okay. I want to save an image. I want to save an image. There are 20 images. There are 20 images which has to be saved. Okay. I require, I save the image one as, I need to save image one as image one. Okay. Then date. Okay. Date and so and so. Then again, image two, then date and so and so. Image three and date and so and so. If you want to save the image like this, okay, where this one, 2, 3 are dynamic and the date is also dynamic. So in this case, what we do is I can say something like, okay, file dot save. Then I can say the same, the file name dot format. I can say dot format. Okay. Then I can do whatever the argument you want here. Okay. So whenever I say, whenever I say that format function, the image number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 can be dynamic, which can be as an argument inside the format function. And also the date can also be argument for the format function. 
this is one of the example this is one of the example because in real world when you are showing some images onto the server okay the image name has to be dynamic or okay, let us assume like january 2020 jan 1st 2020 is the file okay is a file name then the jan the first and the 2020 everything is has to be dynamically be inserted by dynamically to be appended at the end of the image in that case we use this format function one of the example what i give you we will see lot of application of this format function so what we need to worry about it is okay format can be a default argument format can be a position argument and format can be also a keyword argument so this is about the format function okay so let us go with the next function which is index okay and one more example for the format function here is okay i i told you one is default other one is positional argument other one is keyword argument the last one is mixed argument that is either you can give the position or else you can give the name also or a keyword also see here are giving the position and here are giving the name this is also fine but what we need to understand is whenever i say format function the format function would be followed by a default argument followed by a positional argument or a keyword argument and a mixed argument so if you run this let us see what would be the output see it says allow vitrix you are already 6 years old okay mean to say that i have different way i'm trying to format the string as simple as that okay so this is about the format function let us go over to the next function which is index function how index function would work okay i have given the statement here the index method returns the index of the substring inside the string if found the substring is not found it raises an exception what it means let's say with an example i say python programming is easy that is a statement what i have given then i say this this the, the statement python program is easy i have given inside the variable by name sentence then i say sentence dot index is easy okay so let them let me run this so we'll get a better understanding of that okay so when i say sentence dot index is easy you must understand that is easy will be starting from 19 position correct so this is index that is i am getting the index of the particular string as simple as that as simple as that if the particular string is found then you will be getting that if the particular string is not found then you will be getting minus 1 or as it says string not found it raises an exception it is not minus 1 it raises an exception sorry for that okay if the string is not found it says it raises an exception shall we see an example for that i have taken one more example we say python programming is difficult now i am making this python programming easy to python programming difficult but in this sentence i am searching for the index is easy is is easy present inside python programming is difficult no so what will be the output it will be an error it says substring not found again we have a concept of try catch block exception handling and all so that i can handle this exception which is again a later topic let's not worry about it as of now but it will be showing an error for us okay one more example okay i say python programming is difficult okay i'm just searching for the string ing okay i'll just search for ing then it says ing is present at 15th position so the index will tell us on which position at which position the particular substring is present this is about the index function and as i told you in my previous the first statement okay i had given you a statement which says something like this right i told you i'll be coming back to the statement which is c4 to fly 8 jupiter 5 okay i want you people to remember this statement okay i'll be i'll be coming back to this statement once when i complete all the functions once when i complete all the function i'll be explaining you what this statement is okay but we are seeing now what are different functions present and how to access it and how to start working on it okay good so we are done with the format function we are done with the index function we go for is alpha numeric okay the is alpha numeric method returns true if all the characters in the string are alpha numeric Okay, what do you mean by alpha numeric? Either alphabet or numbers. Okay, this is called as alpha numeric. Okay, if the present string, if the complete string consists of either alphabets or numbers, then it will say true, else it will say false. Let me see an example for that. Okay, see, in this case, I have said name is equal to v3 vitrix. Okay, name it is alpha numeric. Yes, see, v is a letter, three is a number, vitrix is again the group of characters. So everything is either a number or either a character so it says yes this name variable is alpha numeric but in the second space it contains a white space it is not only the numbers and the characters it is also a white space so it says when i say it is an alpha numeric it is false his name is alpha numeric it says in this case name is equal to 3 is alpha numeric yes because 3 is a number 
that's the output we get so only the second case is false and the other two case it is true this is about is alphanumeric okay then i go to is digit okay so it digit function what is it digit this digit will check whether the given sentence or the given string is a digit if it is a digit it will say true if it is not a digit it will say it is false okay so in the first case as you know very true these are the very simple functions okay and seems to be very simple function yes but application of this are very huge okay we 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 found we will find lot of applications of all these functions okay we can't neglect this okay so when i say s is equal to 28212 s dot is digit because i say yes is 28212 everything is a digit right so it will say yes it is true in the second case i say v3 so is digit no it is not okay it is also considering the alphabets so this is false okay similarly i can check for is lower okay i can also check for whether the given particular string is a lower okay when i say python is easy i'll check whether the complete sentence is in lower case in the above case it is lower yes in the below case it is lower no because e is caps so i say yes dot is lower in this case it is true when there's k s yes dot is lower in this case it is false so let me run and see yes it says true and false similarly we have something like is numeric okay so is numeric so in this case we can we check for is numeric see is numeric method is returns true if all the strings are numeric characters if not it will return false see 1 2 3 4 5 says everything is a numeric character so it will say yes it is true okay this is a very simple functions again a okay, very simple function but we must let we must get used to it okay now next thing is, is space okay this is very important okay this space function okay when i say is space function see i have a space at the beginning of the string okay i say yes dot space it says that okay it, it will i have given a statement here the is space returns true if there are only white space characters in the string if not it will return false okay in the first case now i have s is equal to slash t and have s is equal to a with the space here and the space after end and s is equal to space when i run this you will be getting true false false why is it so the is space method is true if there is only white space characters in the string when i say slash t mean to say there is a tab space again it's a space okay and i don't have anything else apart from white space this is true and this is false again because at the beginning there is no there is a space provided there is a character here completely it is not a space so this is false and the third case it is not even a space it is just a it is just a single quotes okay if i leave a space then this will become true okay in third case if i if I, this will become true because it is a space but i am not leaving any space here it's just a character i mean it's just a single quotes okay so it is not a space again so is space is a function which checks whether the string whether the string is having completely a white space or not if it is a white space completely then we say it's true if there is no complete white space then it says it is false okay this is about the is space the next function what we have is is title function okay what is is title function see i have given a string by name python is easy okay where is the where when is it title case what do you mean by title case okay the first word but the first letter of the word has to be in capital okay so here i say python is easy where key p is capital i is capital e is capital okay so all the first letter of the three words are capital so when i say s dot is title it has to return us true provided in the second case python is easy only p is capital provided i and e are not capital so it must gives us false so what is in the case of third fourth and fifth can you make a guess yes so we'll run this see first case true everything is a capital case everything is a title case second case yes is a title is it true no because i can see here python is easy in this case p is capital i and d are small when i say 9 is a number in this case it says actually it is what true because 9 is a number let it be i can't make number as a capital case right i don't worry about it but this i a and n it is capital so it follows the title case rule in this case python is only it is title case you can't assume that hey, when i python when i say everything is capital no everything is capital but i am talking about the title case title case mean to say only the first letter has to be capital the first letter is capital then it is a title case syntax is true if only the first capital first letter is not capital then i don't care about the rest of the cases 
okay so when I say this this is also false this is about the Python case what we need to understand similarly we have something like is upper okay is upper mean to say that returns whether or not all characters the string are uppercase or not okay it previously we saw title case where only the first character of the word has to be in the capital letters but in the second case when I say is upper the entire string has to be in capital letters okay so when I run this you can understand here Python is easy everything is capital it is also good everything is capital it is not used false okay where where we see that everything is not capital Okay, everything is not capital so is upper will check whether each and every character present inside the string has to be in capital letter okay this is about the is upper function is it making sense yes okay very important to understand so we have is upper and don't get confused with is title case and is upper is title is different is upper is different okay the next function what we are left out is on the join functions okay this is join okay what join functions will do the join string method returns a string by joining all the elements of an iterable separated by a string operator what is this join function is a bit tricky to understand so I have taken with the most simple examples so that you will understand it better let us take a list let us take a list which is num list which is having one two three four and I said the separator is comma I want to join this one two and three four with the separator which is comma that is in the first case I have the list element which is one then I have two then I have three and for this is the list element this is there inside the list which is uh, num list okay let me take it as a num list now what happens now what happens here is I will be combining this num list with the separator separator is in between each and every element I am putting comma so I say that separator dot join of num list so output what I will be getting is 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 if you say okay fine I don't want to put a comma in between can I put some ash mark here then fine so what happens the output would be 1 ash 2 ash 3 ash and 4 okay so each and every element would be separated using this separator okay this is about the join function okay you can just see the output here you can see that 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 where I am combining the list similarly I am combining the tuple In the tuple case also we are combining 1 2 3 and 4 okay which is separated by a comma this also makes sense so when I when I see the third example which is I have a string by name s1 is equal to abc and I have the string which is s2 is equal to 1 2 3 I am combining the string s1 and s2 when I want to combine the string s1 and s2 I say that s1 dot join of s2 where s1 is a separator where s1 here is a separator I am using the separator as s1 okay then I am having s2 s2 is nothing but 1 2 3 so the separator what is separator s1 now s1 is abc separator is abc then I have s2 is equal to 1 2 3 but when I want to look into it when I want to look at how exactly it works okay so let me take a scenario where when I work on it okay when I work on it you can see that okay abc is s1 s1 is equal to abc and I have s2 s2 is nothing but 1 2 3 so s1 the separator is abc and the string is 1 2 3 when I want to write when I join it how it happens it says I already have 1 2 3 it's already been separated but separator what you want to use is not a space or not a comma but this ABC so I can write the separator as a B and C I'll be just writing I'll be using a different color okay I'll be using as a B C a B C got it it's not a space the separator is ABC similarly in example 4 I am using s2 dot join of s1 s2 is a separator the string is this one such a beautiful function right separator we'll be using this we'll be using in the case where okay the applications is not so much it's not so much in terms of lot like normal okay Python programming but when when you work on web scrapping kind of application or when you work on some okay uh, NLP kind of applications this are there's a lot of a lot of cases where you're using the separators okay so this is about the separator function next function what we have is the same I mean this is about the join function sorry for that this is about the join function okay the join function again I am combining with the sets 
okay where i have taken test is equal to 2 comma 1 comma 3 and i'm separating s dot join of test okay let us see what is the output i have taken two separators here where the separator first case is a comma separator in second case is an arrow mark twice okay so if i do this you see that okay 2 comma 1 comma 3 is a separator is a, is a list separated by comma and here is ruby comma ruby python java we separated by an arrow mark so these are the different applications of how exactly we can use the join function one of the powerful function i can say okay so this is about the join function okay so yeah there, yes there are a lot of other there are a lot of other use cases where we can once when you start working on the applications you'll be getting the use cases of it okay let us go to the lower function let us go to the other function which is called as a lower function what is lower function would do the lower method converts all uppercase characters into a lowercase character as simple as that given the uppercase character or given the mixture of characters some uppercase or some lowercase whatever it might be everything would be converted to the lowercase is what the lower function will say i say this should be lowercase i am just converting the string to lowercase everything has been converted to lowercase for that you can just see here in the above in the below case also there are mixture of uppercase and lowercase but once when i say string dot lower everything has been converted to lowercase got it this is about the lower case function okay similarly when you have lower we must also have upper right yes we have we have upper so what it will do it will be converting the entire case to the upper case as simple as that okay i say string dot upper okay everything has been converted to upper case in the below example also everything is been converted to upper case Okay. Now we have something like swap case. If you are not, if you want an, if you want a scenario where capital has to be converted to small and small has to be converted to capital. Is there a way of doing it? Yes, we have something called swap case. Okay, I'll be just telling the swap case. You can just observe here in the string we have T H I S should all be lower case. Okay, I'm just converting the entire string to lower case. That is wherever it is small, wherever it is capital, I'm converting it to small. Okay, you can see example three here where T H I S where T is capital here, but since I've used swap case, this T has become small here. Okay, so wherever there is a capital, that would be that will be converted to small. Wherever it is small, that would be converted to capital. This is an example of swap case. Beautiful, right? Yes. Okay, let us go for next example, which is L strip. Okay, what is this L strip function? See, strip function basically mean to say that. Okay, it removes the it removes the leading characters. Okay, I'll be telling you what you mean leaving characters. See, I have taken a random string here. I say waitress is for training and development. Okay, where I have the space at the beginning. Okay, where I have I have space at the beginning. So when I say uh, random string dot L strip. It understands. Oh, the fellow says it is L strip. If there are some trending white spaces at the beginning, that has to be removed. That is what it means. It means to say that. It means to say that. So it's he say that whatever the leading characters are there, whatever the leading characters are there, it will be removed. Okay, I'll just run this code so that it'll get a better understanding. Okay. When we see as he say, Vitrix is for training and development. Okay fine so i said that i said that okay so whatever the leading spaces are there okay so in this case that would be removed that would be removed okay now when i say that vtrix a random strip dot l strip of vtrix okay what it means what it means see the understand the statement of the function the l strip method returns a copy of the string with leading characters removed Okay, leading characters removed mean to say that if there is some leading characters in the string, see for example, here I say random random characters string dot L strip of Vtrix. Okay, there's no leading spaces here. Okay, there's no leading spaces here. So we don't get an option to remove anything. For example, when I say here, when I say like for example, okay, let me take an example four. Okay, https dot www dot Vtrix dot in. Okay, I say that L strip https dot slash dot mean to say that okay so strip this https dot slash and give me whatever is there after that okay this is what it means to say it means to say that so whatever is there after the https then just give whatever is there after that so in this case in this case you can understand that www.vtrix.in has been given onto the screen but https is to slash is been removed 
okay that is if it's starting at the beginning this is starting at the beginning so if it is leading if it is leading with this particular leading understand lead mean to say starting okay so if it is starting with https just remove that but in this case even though it is starting from vtrix but it is not led it is not leading by vtrix there are some spaces at the beginning so this says okay i'm not responsible now similarly is f it is leading with isf no right it is leading with some space with the vtrix so it does not make sense okay but in this case when i say l strip with if leading with https yes it is leading with https okay https so we can say that it has been removed okay this is an example this is an example of what we need to understand what understand with l strip okay i'll just replace with https let you understand what will be the output okay see you'll understand that it has been replaced it okay so this is about the l strip character okay now let me take that let me uh, alter this alter this let me say that okay i'll be keeping this random string i'll just copy this and i'll comment it out I say control c i'll remove the white space at the beginning and i'll run it once again so that you'll understand it better okay i'll remove this white space okay now i'll run see in this case vtrix is leading so i say l strip of vtrix so vtrix is leading so whatever comes after vtrix will be given for you in the previous case it was not happening because there was a space understand understand people it is very important okay whichever is leading when you want to say lead if it is leading like this lead if it is a leading take whatever is there after this okay in this case is f no it is not leaded by isf the complete statement this random string is not led by is space f so you it, there is no change in the string but in this case yes in this case it is starting with vtrix it is led it is it is leading by vtrix so whatever comes after vtrix would be given you for an output but not vtrix similarly here right i am saying that https dot slash slash so whatever comes after that slash dot slash would be given you for an output but before that whatever is there will not be given you as an output okay this is the most important element and uh, yes it is very interesting okay it is very interesting to understand about the l strip function also okay similarly for l strip uh, l strip comes for left okay left strip so we have right strip we call it as r strip okay r strip the same it works for the same it was for the same provided it would be taken for the left l strip it will be taken for the left and r strip would be taken for the right see you can see this here okay so whatever is there it says dot in slash okay i want you to see this example 2 www dot vtrix dot in slash so dot in slash whatever is there before that is r strip i want to remove towards the right dot in slash has to remove from the right and whatever is there before that would be displayed onto the screen okay this is what we understand www dot vtrix that's it okay because dot in has been removed because you only told no strip it you are stripping what you are stripping dot in slash okay you are stripping towards the right so it is right strip okay left strip find right strip and is there only the strip function yes okay we have only the strip function okay let us see that see hi hello by string dot strip i just say this okay i just say this let us see the output see towards the left the space is removed towards the right space is removed so if you want to remove the white spaces the function is strip got it so strip is of two types left strip and right strip you can pass an argument where you want to lead which one is leading you want to remove if you want to remove towards the right you can use right strip r strip if you want to remove towards the left then you can go for l strip and if you want to just to remove the white spaces just go for strip this is about the string fu strip function next function is on partition let us understand about the python partition function so in partition function what happens is it splits the sentence it splits the sentence the word before the partition and word after the partition or else the words after the partition the words before the partition let us take an example here where i have python is easy and enjoying the statement what we have so now what we do is we'll use is as a separator so that whatever the words which is present before is is one part and whatever the words which is present after is is other part if you want to split your sentence before is and after this what you can do is you can partition your string how to partition you need to give the partition word so i say here as string dot partition is 
So when we do this, the compiler understands, oh, here whatever is there before is has to be separated with whatever is there after if. So that this is one part of the statement and this other part of the statement, this is what the output would be. So we are trying to partition the entire sentence into two parts. This is about the partition function. Let us see the output of the partition function to get a better understanding on it. Let me run this. As you can see here, we can understand that. So the word is actually separated. The word is actually separated with Python, which is one part, is the other part, easy and enjoying. In the second case, actually, we are trying to split without using, without having the word which is not. If we try to do this, then you must understand there is no not word in the sentence, so the split would not happen. Okay. That is what it is. So the partition function will actually partition, will actually divide your complete sentence into two parts, which is before the partition word, before the separator word, and after the separator word as a two different entities. This about the partition function. Next important function, what we see is a replace function. What replace function will do? Let's take an example here, where we have something like a uh, cold, cold Asia. Okay, something like cold cold is a sentence what we have here. Okay, now what we do is I want to replace, I want to replace wherever Asia is there with Antarctica. So what we do is I say sentence dot replace, sentence dot replace wherever we have Asia to Antarctica. Okay, so when we do this, what happens in the sentence which is cold comma cold comma Asia, it Asia gets gets replaced with Antarctica. We'll just run this code. Yes, you got it. Cold, cold, Antarctica. This is one part. And one more thing is, we have a sentence by let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Okay. And what we want to do is, wherever we have let, I want to replace it with to don't let. Okay. You can just see here. Okay. Wherever I have let, we, we have to change it to don't let. And one more important thing, what we need to understand here is, when I say let, okay, whenever we say let, uh, it is a capital, it is a case sensitive. Okay. The first sentence, what we can see here is let, capital let, it is not getting changed here. Okay, the small let is getting changed as you can understand this. So we can see let it be the first remains the same, but in the rest of the cases, let it would be changed to don't let it. Okay, this is how it is. This is about replace, replacing the part of the thing or replacing the given word or wherever you want. Okay, and one more important thing is we are given an option here as two. Okay, again option here as two. You need to understand the arguments. You need to understand the argument replacing only two occurrences of let. Okay, whenever I say only two occurrences of let, I given two. If you want to go into three, you can give three occurrences of let. If you don't want to give any occurrences and you want the entire string to be changed, then don't give any argument. It takes as it is. Since I have given two arguments to be changed, then only two times the let is changed to don't let. Okay, this is about the replace function. The next function is your R find. The next function is R find. What does R find function will do? Let us send this. Okay, when we say the R find function, the method return highest index of the substring if found. If not found, it returns minus one. It will actually help you to find out the highest index of the given substring. Mean to say, the programming might be there here also, the programming might be there here also, but wherever is the highest occurrence, it is at somewhere around 20th location. This is at the 57th location. So it will give the highest occurrence because you are given R find. If you just give find, it will give you the first occurrence since you are giving R find, it will give you the highest occurrence. So your sentence is Python is object oriented programming. Then I am telling sentence dot R find. So find something towards the right. And the word what I am looking is for programming. So it says the substring programming what you are looking is there at 57th position. When you don't give R find and if you just give find, they can observe that it will not be it will not be giving you 57. Rather it will be giving this location might be around 23 or 24. Okay, this is what is about the R find function. Find will find a string, but it will give you the starting position uh, wherever the first word occurrence, but R find will give you the last word occurrence. Okay, this is about R find. The R find I can use in a different way. Let us take an example here where I give an R find programming 10 comma 50. Mean to say that search for the word programming only between the characters 10 and 50. Okay, what I mean to say here? What I mean to say here is here I have the series of words. Okay, let me say that this is like around zeroth position. Okay, this is zeroth position and this is first position, this second position, this third position. We want doing like this. And let us assume this tenth position. If any if in between 10 position to 50th position if there is any programming word found only then find it 
this is what we actually trying to understand that is sentence dot r find we are finding the word programming between 10 comma 50 okay this is i am giving a range to find out the word this is about r find function with the limitations between the count of the word that is count of the character that is character position so in the initial case in the first case we just give the programming we are not giving any position but second case we are actually giving the position to find out the word this is about r find function and there are a lot of applications when you start working on uh, web scrapping applications or you start working on NLP kind of application. Yes, we do understand there are a lot of applications of it, but we need to see to it. Okay, we need to see where to use and how to use. Uh, it comes by practice. We have to come. It, can, it comes by practice. Okay, I had given. I'll uh, we will be having this file so that we can do a lot of exercises on this. And if you solve our assignments, you'll get a better understanding on string functions. Okay, and one more function what we I felt was important is R index. Okay, this R index method is written the highest index of the substring. Okay, it results the highest interest. For example, when I say let it, let it, so let it is there here also, let it is there here also, let it is there here also, but it will return the highest index. See, there is two functions. One is called as index, other one is R index. Okay, we need to understand. We have two functions here. One is index, other one is R index. So what is the difference? Whenever I say the index function, when I use the index function, the index function will find out the particular world, will find out the particular world, and it will tell at which position the particular word is find, found at. But R index will find out the particular word and if there are multiple occurrences of the word, if there are multiple occurrences of the word, then it will tell us the highest index. If the multiple occurrences is there, then it will tell us the highest index. For example, let it is there here also. It is a case sensitive. So let's not worry about this. But let it is there here also. Let it is there here also. I told my sentence to find index of let it. Okay. It would have given this position also, but it didn't give this position. Rather, it will be giving us this position. Why? Because I told R index. The, it will give you the maximum maximum string. Okay. I mean maximum position, the highest position. If you don't want that, if you want the first position itself, then give what? Index. Don't give R index. This is about let it. This is about the R index function. Okay. So let us run this. We'll understand the output. See, it says it's 422. Okay. And the more and one more function. What I felt interesting was like split function. Okay. The split method breaks up the string and the specified operator returns the list of string. For example. Okay. See, this is this is important actually. When I say a, a sentence and I don't want it in a sentence and I want I want the sentence to be break into each and every word. I want the sentence to be break into each and every word. So what will I do now? I say Python is separate word, N is separate word, C plus is separate word, R is separate word. If we want this to happen, what we do now is sentence dot split. So when I do sentence dot split, each and every word of the sentence will get printed and it would be in the list format. Okay, so I want to show the output. You can just see the Python and C++ are object oriented programming. Each and every word is given as a list element. Python is one element, and is one more element, C++ is one more element. So each and every element is splitted. Okay, this is about the split function. This is useful whenever you want to, whenever you want to count the number of words, when you want to count the number of words, then you, and you can take the each and every element, then count the length of the string, length of the list, you get the output. Okay, so like a split function will help us to remove the complete sentence and put each and every element to the list element as it is. This is about the split function. Okay, and we can also give, okay, we can also give split function which an argument. The argument I have given here as comma 3. Okay, when I give comma 3, it, what it will do is, it will say the maximum split, what I must do is only 3. Okay, see, you can just understand, only the first 3 splits have happened. That is, Python and C++. Only 3 splits have happened and rest all will be as it is. Okay, rest all will be as it is. So, I give an argument as 3. This is the number of splits to take, the number of splits to happen. That is sentence dot split, number of splits to happen. If you don't want the number of splits to happen and if you want it to be as it is, then you can give directly as split function itself. Split function itself, this is what it is. Okay, and uh, let's understand about R split function. Okay, when we take something like R split function, we'll understand how it works. Okay, so Python and C++ are object oriented programming. Okay, after R split, it works same as split without second argument. Okay, so what it is, when I say something like Python and C++, you can understand the R split method split string from the right of specified separator and return the list of string. Okay, the R split and split both works the same, provided R split will work, the R split will work from the right. 
in here here r split and split both will be the same because it is split in each and every element as it is but here i am giving split with comma 3 so the split will happen from the beginning but in this case but in this case i am giving r split comma 2 that is it starts splitting from the light Okay, start splitting the right. For the better understanding, what I do now is I'll try to explain you. See, let us understand. Um, just give me a moment. So let us understand that. See, here I have something like Python C plus plus or object oriented programming. Okay, I just given split. So when I just give split, it does not make. It does not see. In this case, R split or split, both will perform the same. There is no doubt at all because we are we are just splitting each and every element. If in case if I give split with the argument as 3 then the splitting will happen from the beginning this is one word this is one more word this is one more word each and every element happens like this okay that is the first three element would be splitted from the left but when I give R split the splitting will happen from the right if you want to understand in this case Python and C++ object oriented programming oriented and programming will be separated Python and C++ our object will remain the same because you are given R split and not split very important to understand okay I'll run this for you so you'll get understanding okay so let me run this okay see you can understand here so when I say Python and C++ object or programming oriented and programming is separated but Python and C++ object remains the same in the previous case Python and C++ was Python and C++ Python and C++ were different our object programming was the same because it was just a split with the argument here it is R split okay that is the reason splitting is happened like this important to understand okay so we will see one of the last function like okay, last two more functions okay this is something like split lines okay when I say split lines the split line method splits the string at line breaks and returns a list of lines in the string format it splits the line okay it splits the line very simple function not, not, nothing much complex okay yeah, I have given slash n so it understands that it might must go to the new line okay I must give it in a different line so this is one line hi hello will be in one line hope you are enjoying the session would be the second line and vtrace technologies will make it yeah. Yes, this is the third line so each and every line is beneath the complete sentence is splitted based on the line wise this is about the split lines function it's not much complex function very easy to understand okay now we have last two more function which is starts with okay when I give starts with function I say Python is easy to learn okay then I say this is a text I given inside a variable by name text then I say text dot starts with is easy okay I'm I'm actually verifying is, is the text is starting with is easy no right so it will say false if text dot starting with python is yes so it will say true text dot start with python is easy to learn yes it is true so it checks whether the text is static with the given word if it is so then it will return true if it is not it will return false it will return false okay that's what we need to understand okay so it will be as one of the starts with function where it checks for the particular word if it is happening it will say yes if not it will get false okay this is about the start with function the last function what we left out is the title function the title method returns a string with the first letter of each word capitalized for example vtrix next point is on enlight and ai product okay this is one of the product what we are presently working on okay so this product it says vtrix next product is on enlight and ai product so in this case every word is small okay every word is small but i want only the first word of each first letter of each word to be in capital don't worry just give text dot title so when we see this when we see this we understand vtrix next product is on enlight okay so this is about the title function so these are the most important string function what we need to understand okay so there's, no, there's nothing to buy hat there's nothing to buy hat where we need to remember all the function the syntax and everything okay we can use it as and then but I have told you a statement at the top right I told you the statement at the top where I, I told you that to remember the string function you can just remember the statement which is c4 to fly 8 Jupiter's 5 okay I'll just tell you the statement I'll elaborate the statement so that now you can understand what this means and how to remember the different string functions so now is the time to make you people understand what is that c4 2 fli 8 and jupiter 5 okay so what you can understand here is whenever i say c4 it is the four different function center case fold capitalize and count similarly whenever i say with e which is ends with okay uh, we have Jupiter right we have Jupiter I want you to understand Jupiter I'll just remove this Jupiter and I'll put it here so uh, we have something like 2f 
okay 2f and l 2fl mean to say that let us find format lower l strip i8 there are eight different functions which start from i index is all num is digit is lower is numeric is space is title is upper okay similarly we have jupiter which is i don't want to take this y i just want you to remember so i put this y but there's no function starting from y but what is just jupiter when i say j it is join u upper p partition t title r r strip e and switch so this is all you must remember then i can say with yes five there are five functions starting from yes swap case strip split split lines and starts with so this is how i told you about c4 to fly 8 jupiter's phi okay this is one of just a statement for you people to remember about the string functions but nothing is there to buy heart okay so when as and when when you ask in interviews or when you are doing some nlp kind of projects or working on web scrapping or you're working on string applications or you're working on some word directories or word files okay just for a recap if you can just remember the statement and write it somewhere at the top or somewhere somewhere there you can remember these functions and you can start working accordingly apart from this there are other string functions too which is rarely used if you want you can just go to jupyter notebook and uh, go for the help so you can understand it better so this is all about the string functions okay the string functions if you, if you want to get a better clarity on it you need to do our assignment and make sure that you are following all the steps and meet within the deadline so that you'll understand it and clear the interview questions as mentioned by our team